terms of like, because the topic was on God uh, entering creation. Yeah. And I was wondering, do you believe personally that God has to limit one of his attributes to enter creation? No. Because in the Bible, I think Jesus mentions that it doesn't know the time, time or the end. Yes, that's correct. But in that aspect, Jesus is an all knowing in that yep. situation. Yep. So, how. How is he not limiting the attribute of like yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Okay. In that so when 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 when, 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 when we talk about, when we talk about when we talk about this. Yeah. 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 You stood right there, bro. You're choosing to stand. I'm right always talking to you. I was talking to him. Stop whinging. I'm talking to you. So in terms of in terms Bullying, of in terms of uh, as, as, as if you're worried as if you're worried. <laughs> so in terms of the Council of Chalcedon, yeah. what we say is that Christ has two natures in the one person. Yeah. These natures are not confused. They're not mingled. They're not changed. Yeah. They're not separated and they're not divided. Okay? So the attribute of the divine, the lo divine logos, yeah. takes on the fullness of humanity. Okay. okay? That fullness of humanity is not confused, it's not commingled, it's not separate to, it's not divided from, but it but it does not change either. Okay? So when the logos becomes a man becomes a full man, just like me and you. And we have conscious knowledge and unconscious knowledge. Knowledge of which we are consciously aware, yeah. and knowledge which is beyond our reach. It's there, but it is not accessible to our conscious come here, mind. Come here. That's how humans operate, right? And this question about the, the no, knowing the day nor the hour yeah, falls into that category of knowledge that is present but not accessible. Now, let me finish. Yeah, because it says in Scripture, it says in the in Luke uh, that Christ grew in wisdom and knowledge before his parents. It says in the book of Acts that Christ came to reveal times and seasons. So that which was relevant to what he came to do in his earthly life is what was the accessible knowledge to him. As God, as pure God, he knows all of physics. But obviously, we Christians aren't going around saying Christ knew the, 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 the theory of relativity 2,000 years ago. Um, so, like, God so, the Son. Do you absorb what I've said? I'm saying that knowledge that, that knowledge that was not relevant to his earthly ministry is placed within his unconscious. But he's, it's not accessible, so that means he's not all in that in the sun, in his form of being the sun. Yeah, by virtue of his humanity. Yeah. By virtue of his humanity. Yeah. But in that in, in that phrase, he says, um, "Nor the son, only the father knows." Yeah, and the son is fully God according to Christianity, right? Correct. So he, he, but how can he be how can he be fully God when he can't access knowledge? Right. So, so what we what we've said, yeah, yeah. what we've said yeah. is that that Christ becomes fully man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. When Christ Christ refers to himself as the Son multiple times in his earthly life, and he's talking about the fullness of himself. Okay, so okay. it's not that we separate out this term just to refer to his divinity. It refers to his person, the one person of Christ. Are you saying that's a dual thing? In the, when he's saying the Son, he's not just there's one God person the within two natures yeah. that operates through two natures. Those two natures operate. So that means that when Christ had a humanity, he had a conscious knowledge and an unconscious knowledge, just like every human being here does. Those things that were, that were not relevant to his ministry on earth were not accessible to him. That doesn't mean that that knowledge has disappeared. It doesn't mean that that knowledge is not something present there with him. It just means that by virtue of his humanity is not accessible at that moment. Because they don't know then. I will be lying then. You must say I don't want to tell you no. Sorry. That's different. Uh, is it okay if I transition to that, uh, the question that I had? Yeah, 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 of course. It's, you it's can, kind yeah, of related yeah, to like God the man and God the son. I just, uh, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to bring it out. Yeah. Uh, in the book of Acts, after the resurrection, yeah, the apostles asked uh, Christ this. So the, when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you 
and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Syria. So what it's saying is that not uh, he, that he hasn't come to reveal everything to them. But, um, sorry, if, 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 he can, if he can, like, if uh, God the Father can put restrictions on God the Son, that's it. Sitting in the God the Father has placed restrictions on God the Son. By virtue of his humanity. By virtue of his humanity, yes. But by virtue of humanity, he can, he can access less information and less more. So basically, by virtue of his humanity, can he forget that he's God? Because humanity has, has, the, has the ability to forget. Yeah. And by virtue of his humanity, theoretically, he can forget that he's God himself. So by virtue that can mean that. Can mean that as, a, as, a, so, as a hypothetical question, yeah. as a hypothetical question, I'm going to entertain it in all seriousness. Yeah. But so say, that could possibly forget. mean that, like, I mean, for example, Carl can be God. Question. It's because a good hypothetical question. Yeah. That can mean God, Carl can be God. But for example, wait, 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 why can a Carl be God? No, no, I'm, I'm talking about my friend, sorry. Oh, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he can hypothetically be God, but he's just forgotten the fact that he's God because he's limited by his humanity. Well, this is a good hypothetical question, but we have to deal with what, what actually Christians believe about Jesus. We don't believe that Jesus forgot that he was God. Yeah, but if the avenue is open there, like if the avenue of the ability to forget is open, yes, surely we can't just... Like, or rather, the, the attribute, this is not about forgetting, though. we're talking about something that is accessible. This is not about forgetting, this is about what is accessible. But it could also not be accessible, the knowledge of knowing that you're God. By virtue of your Would you agree that humans can grow into knowledge? Yeah. That humans do grow into knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of in terms of Christ operating through his humanity, there has to be limits, right? There's a limited shape. There's a limited lifespan. You're born. You die. Christ is operating through his humanity. You, you, I mean, if you're a good human being, you pray to God. The, the Son prays to the Father. And he's operating through his humanity. He has to have limits of knowledge. So in terms of those limits of knowledge, we've got to be clear, it's not that those that knowledge is not present. That knowledge is present in the person of Jesus. It is just not accessible by the virtue of his humanity. I have a similar question. Like from I'm, I'm not talking to him. Bro. I have a similar question. I'm ask, bro, he's just going to stop being rude yeah. if you let him into this conversation. You will lose this conversation. Give me a good conversation. I'm not being rude. You, you oh, will lose this conversation. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, before no, no, creation, no, 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 was Allah merciful to Before creation. But he's like the ever creator. So. Yeah. So, creation is eternal. No, no, no. Sorry. So creation is not eternal. Yeah, yeah. So who was he giving mercy to before creation? In terms of like... I don't want to comment on something I... I... My point is that within Islamic doctrine, you have the idea that, that the attributes of God yeah. are not in operation. Are you saying like because there's no there was no one? Allah is merciful, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's never That's his character, but he's not merciful until there's someone to be merciful to. But surely the act of creating, the most like the, the intention he had of the act of creating is a mercy. He's gonna but that's mercy a transaction. My point is, before creation, who is he merciful to? Who's merciful? Like, who was there to be merciful to before he created anything? I mean, I, I don't want to comment. Was he being merciful to himself? I don't. Like what did he do wrong to be merciful to? The intent was there uh, to create. Right. Allah always, the scholar says Allah always yeah, create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allah eternally create. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's created. So, 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 do you, do you believe that creation is eternal? Not so. You're pantheist. No, 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 no. I wanted to, but surely, like what I was mentioning before, opens the door to pantheism in regards to like if God my, can't access knowledge. So let let, let me bring it back to the incarnation because I'm yeah, not trying to run sure, away from yeah, the topic. Yeah, yeah, sure. My point to you is that within Islamic Taweed, within the doctrines of Islam about what you believe about Allah, you have the idea, nascent within your own beliefs, yeah. that the attributes of God are not always in operation. They are there. They are present in Allah. Yeah, Allah yeah. is merciful, but his mercy is not in operation until he has something to be in operation to. Okay. That's not true. Now, within the incarnation, like, see, the knowledge of God is present, mm -hmm. but it is That's not, not in operation. That's not speaking when I'm telling lie and That's not our doctrine. That's right. lie. Okay. Yeah. You get that? Yeah, Allah yeah, mercy okay, always active. Next question. Yeah, sorry. Allah so, mercy uh, always active. Um, in regarding, um, do you believe God, God, the the Father, Father, and God the Son have the same will? God the Father and God and the Son have the same will. This is a question that I'm just starting to dig into. That's my bottom religion. We believe as Christians that in the incarnation, yeah. Christ has two Allah wills. Allah Allah a Allah human will Allah. and a divine will. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And that the divine will is always to do the will of the Father. Okay. 
So and the human will yeah. that we see, like for instance, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he says, you know, Father, if it is your will, remove yeah, this cup right. from my yeah. hand, but not my will, but your yeah, will be done, yeah. is an example of the human will with the, a, with the a son's yeah. divine yeah. will. The human the will. Human will the human will. No, it's not against. It's not against. The church condemns that as a heresy. We don't teach that. Okay. The human will. The human will is is conforming to the divine will, which is what a perfect human being should do. The perfect human being should conform their will to the divine will. So I, I just wanted to, um, in terms of the Garden of Gethsemane, that is a conversation, I just want to clarify this, um, that is a conversation between um, Jesus the human with Jesus the divine son? No. Not, not, Jesus, not the divine son with the father? No, so who, that, who that, is, that is a discussion because we, what, what, the, the thing is, who's your line of argument yeah. presupposes two persons there. We don't believe in two persons, we believe in one person. Okay, okay. So Jesus is speaking to the Father. Jesus as the God man is speaking to yes, the Father. Yes, Jesus as okay. the God man is speaking to the Father. I wasn't sure if it's so. Um, and this conversation is operating out of the human will. Because the human will has to, as it were, travel through human desires, human intentions, human fears, human anxieties, human you know, it's gotta travel through all of that to get to wherever it's going. You've got to make a choice, but you make a choice through time and space and circumstance and, you know, your own mind, your own fears, your own needs, your own desires. You know, me and you might want to talk to one another, but if one of us really needs the toilet, our will to stay here and talk has got to travel through that need. Do you know what I'm saying? So when Christ, the one person of Christ, is saying, Father, if it is your will, remove this cup from my hand, his human will is traveling through very human fears and very human anxieties about the upcoming crucifixion. Yeah? To arrive at that perfect submission. It corresponds with and cooperates with the divine will, which is what every human being needs to do. So it's not... Because I was thinking, like this was my, my understanding of yeah. the passage before you mentioned this. But my understanding was it was either God the um, God the Son speaking to God the Father, saying, if not my will, your will be done. That's incorrect. So, sorry, say um, that again. It was God the Son yep. speaking to God the Father, saying, if not my will, your will be done. Yeah, it is, it is God the Son. But you've got to remember, when we say, when we don't make I'm, a I'm division... Not, between, I'm separating the... I was separating yeah, what we're saying is you don't. Okay. You don't confuse the natures. Mm -hmm. You don't mix the natures, you don't change the natures, but you don't separate the natures. Because if you okay, yeah. Because I was thinking Because in the in the one person, the one person of Christ operates through both divine and human nature. So let me give you an example of what that looks like, particularly about death. Because yeah. obviously this is a bit contention. How can Christ die if he's God? Yeah, yeah, it's a fair question. It is a fair question. It's just being mutilated by Muslims who don't understand Christian theology. We say that both the human and the divine nature pass through death. But the way that they respond, the way that it affects them, is different according to their nature. So, for example, if I get an iron rod and a wooden rod and chuck them both into a river, the iron rod will sink and the wooden rod will float over the river. They've both gone into the same thing, but they have behaved totally differently. One passes over the top and the other one sinks to the bottom. And so it is with the human and divine nature. The hu at death, and in many of these questions, the, the death affects the human nature. It, it, it kills it. But the divine nature passes through death unblemished, untouched, uncorrupted by it, unchanged by it. Sorry, um, just in regards to like the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. Um, the like the human nature, the God human nature of Jesus is going against. Uh, was originally against the will of the Father, right? In that specific no, situation. not against. Not against, but um, it was never against. Was not aligned with the will of the no, Father. No, it was. No, 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 no. You, you misunderstood me, so I'm going to try and break it down. Okay. It's not against. Yeah. He's asking a question. It's appropriate to ask God questions. But he says, if not my will, no. your will be done. So, I yeah, mean, yeah, you yeah. have a difference of wills. Yeah, no, no, hold on one second. No, that's not what that passage is saying. Shall we go to it? It's yeah, in yeah, Luke. Sure, sure. Yeah, because the thing is, people always get stuck on that bit and they forget the bit that comes be, uh, a bit later on. Okay, because I was thinking, I, I, I was just going to present my, um, what I was going to say. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it would have probably been attacking the wrong thing. Sure, go on. But, but no, go on. Mean, um, like, if, 
the sun's will is if the human sun's if the human nature's sun's will is against God the Father's will, it's kind of a human sacrifice in a way because it, this, the human nature of Christ is being taken against His will by God the Father. All right. So a bodily sacrifice. Yeah. 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 Let, so let, he's, let, being, let, he's being sacrificed let, as a human sacrifice against so, His will. So, so let, let's read it. And he came out and proceeded, as was as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples who followed him, when he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Yeah, That is not stating what his will is. Because his will is, if you listen to that prayer, he's saying that my will is to do your will. Wait, sorry, what was that uh, the bit the, the, about the, remove, the, your, remove the cup? Father, or? if you are willing, yeah. remove this cup from me. Yet, yeah, not my will, but yours be done. So what is the will of the Son? To do the Father's will or not? But would you agree with me that that passage shows that the will of Jesus is to do the will of the Father? Because he's submitting to the Father's will. He's saying, your will be done. Um, like, eventual submission. Like, he wants an eventual aligning of wills. But in that specific case, like, just predating that eventual aligning, there's a separation of wills. I, I, I disagree, because this is a singular prayer. And it literally says, not my will, but yours be done. So you're saying, like, not my will? Yeah, yours. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Not my will, but yours be done. So, what is the will of Jesus? to do the will of the Father. He's literally saying, not my will, but yours be done. So, is it fair of me to say that the will of Jesus is to do the will of the Father? Um, yeah, I guess. yeah, that's what's happening here.